Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking our wooden floor material from the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. Before we get started, let's take a look at the uh, files that we'll be needing for this video. We're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001, which is a bit of a mouthful, and also gun scratches 003. Both of these I already have saved to my hard drive, but I'll include a link to them below this video. Okay, let's head over to Cinema 4D. Okay, so this is our scene as we left it last time. Um, if you'll remember, we brought in our material using our material converter, uh, which did the vast majority of the work for us. All we did was make a slight adjustment to the roughness map um, via a multiply node and a float value, just to give us some more control over the effect the, the map was having on our finished material. We wanted the floor to be a bit shinier. And it's actually this area that we'll be working on today. But before we get started, I just want to go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map, where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's... Uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, they'll, they'll be, the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get to work. Um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and give us some room to work here, because there's going to be quite a few nodes that we're bringing in. There we go. Now, the first thing we're going to do is bring in our smudges texture. So I'll right mouse button about here and then select texture and then image. And then I'm going to go to on the wrong node here. There we go. Um, yeah, we need to navigate to where our smudges are and load that in. So there's a few different options. Um, we've got uh, a couple of white on black smudges and a, and a black on white one. Um, the one I'm going to pick though is this one, um, mainly because it's a it's a 16-bit texture, um, which is oh yeah, it's got more color depth, uh, which means we'll get more detail from the texture. I always tend to pick these where the option is available. So let's open that in and give this little texture a name of smudges, just so we can keep a nice track of what we're doing. I would have expected that name to change, yet it did not. Weird, but not important. Fair enough. Okay, um, so the first thing we need to do is change this gamma value, change that down to one. Now, as a general rule, if a texture contributes towards the color of a um, of the finished material, such as like the color map and the reflection map, you'll notice these we've already set to two point two, and that's that's correct. That's what they should be. We want gamma corrections to be applied to these textures. But for textures like the gloss map and our smudges map, there, you would want this set to one because you want the raw information from this texture. You don't want anything else affecting it. So that's why we do that. Now, what we need to do is. Firstly, let's just plug this directly into our roughness map and see what we get. And yeah, you can. It, it's kind of hard to make out because now the floor's gone really, really shiny. But you can start to see that there's these smudgy kind of footprints um, around. Um, oh, I'm getting a random notification. There we go. Um, now the thing we need to do now is find a way to to mix these textures together. Yeah. Now the best way to do that is via a screen. Uh, mix type, which is a fairly common mix type. Um, you probably would have used it if you've used Photoshop and various other various other things. The trouble is Octane doesn't have one, <laughs> uh, which isn't ideal. But we will uh, we'll we'll work around that. Now we can make our own screen mix type by using a couple of invert, well, sorry, three invert nodes. So I'm going to play that place that here, here. Ooh. And also here, don't worry, I'll zoom in a minute so we can see what we're doing a bit more clearly. There we go. So we've got our three invert nodes, and then I'm going to put in a multiply. Because the way a screen works is it basically inverts the inputs, uh, does a multiply operator, and then it inverts the output. And that's what we're replicating here. So let's just build that 
up a little there we go and that that effectively now is our screen mix type so if I feed our roughness map into texture 1 and then the smudges map into texture 2 and then the output into roughness we should get quite a good result yes as you can see now we've got our original roughness map still in place the floor looks like it should um, but with our smudges overlaid on top so yeah that's working good the only thing we don't have now is a way of controlling this the effect of this because this is too much um, it, the, the floor's looking somewhat on the dirty side <laughs> uh, it's also uh, we should take note at this point that it's also um, the, the scaling's a little off, but we'll fix that last. First, let's add in our method of control, and that is going to be essentially exactly what we did here. We had a multiply node and then a float value. So I'll drag that down here, plug that into texture 2. We'll name this smudges adjust just so we can see what we're doing. And then, like before, this value will control our the strength of our smudges at 1. It's, it, essentially it's full strength and it's zero there's no smudges whatsoever we'll go for a value of about 0.6 even that's probably a little high but yeah we'll, we'll leave it on that for now now to adjust the smudges we're going to click on the texture and then click on this UV transform button and that will give us an extra little node here which will allow us to um, adjust the scaling of our texture now currently it's uh, it's these s.x s.y values that are adjusting the the scaling. So if I up this to say, let's try three. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking a lot better already. Maybe even a little lower, maybe 2.5. Yeah, yeah. Now, now the smudges are a more realistic size compared to the um, mapping of, of the original material. The footprints are about right compared to the, the boards of the floor. So that's looking pretty good, um, and then, yeah, no, that's it, isn't it? We've already done the strength. <laughs> yeah, our smudges are good to go. So the next step is to add in our scratches. So I'm just going to move that node up here, um, and we'll, we'll work down the bottom here. Let's right mouse button again, go to textures and image, and then I wonder if this one will rename for us. That's weird, isn't it? Because that's now changed as much as... Anyway, you're getting distracted, Bill. Right. So let's go find our gun scratches. Here they are. And like before, I'm going to bring in the 16-bit overlay. There are some various other options here. We've got some displacement textures and normal maps, etc. And for various things, they, they, would have, they would have their uses. But for this, this, uh, this overlay will work best. So I'm going to bring that in. And then, one of the benefits of Optane, it might not have a screen operator, <laughs> but it does have a built-in bump uh, input, which is which is really handy, because it's separate from its normal input. So we've got our normal map going in, and that's providing the height information for our floorboards. And in a lot of renderers, you'd have to make additions to that normal map to add in the scratches. But this has a, a dedicated bump input, which is great, because we can just plug the bump straight in and we're starting to see our scratches on our render yeah what we do need to do though is change the gamma to one and that, that's a good example of why we do that because look look at the difference now we get we're getting the full detail from the scratches texture no gamma corrections getting in the way and we're getting a lot of a, a lot of scratches now we do need to adjust that so let's adjust the scaling first of all we'll click on that uv transform button and we'll try a value of about 0.3 should work pretty well for us yeah, yeah, that works well. Now what we need to do is also invert this texture. The way a bump map works is white areas, um, the brighter areas, will bump out of the surface and the darker areas will cut in. Um, and obviously scratches should be cutting in and they're not at the moment, they're, they're bumping out. So we'll invert the texture and then that will fix that problem. Then they're now bumping into the surface. Problem is, it's way too much of an effect way too much now I don't believe there's a direct sort of way of adjusting this is there no so what we're gonna have to do is what we've done in the previous uh, previous parts of the video is adding a multiply node 
we'll just put that there, and then also a float value, which we'll put there. There we go. So now we can connect our scratches into texture one and the float into texture two, and then the output into our bump, like so. And then this now becomes our scratches adjust. And like before, we can now adjust the strength of these scratches via this slider. However, it's such a small effect that we want, we're going to be much better off just adjusting the actual, the actual number here to something like 0 0.01, which is barely anything. But even then, um, I might even want to go a little lower than that. But we'll leave that on for now. What I will do is enlarge this a little. There we go. Just give that a second to clear up, make sure it's looking good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely lowered the scratches down a little further, um, and the smudges probably as well. But for the purpose of a tutorial, I would say that's job done. So in summary, we've taken our wooden floor material from the previous video and added in some surface imperfections, um, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel.